Actually, I lied to you, Tam. I'm sorry. I'm going to set a timer. Although, I'm just going to keep the clap. The clap is fine. Alrighty, and we're going to go in just a second here. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Brawlin' with Brett. I am your host, Brett. Obviously, I feel like that should be self-explanatory. So, we are back to play some brawls. We are recording on Wednesday, so we'll be going in the brawl queue and not in the Brawler's Guild Hall. Um, I'm pretty excited uh, today to play some Questing Beast. Um, we did a little bit of Questing Beast before Theros, and so the deck has not changed wildly, but... There's enough changes, and to be totally honest with you, I had a stressful day at work, and this is my favorite Brawl deck, and I feel like it's one of my better Brawl decks, so I feel like playing this today. So that's what we're doing. So I'm going to show you the deck. Also, side note, totally unrelated to Brawl, but I got these bitchin' new sweatpants. They're Arctic Camo, and I'm super excited about it. I just wanted you all to know to be excited, too. So, okay, Questing Beast. Here's the deck. Questing Beast, real quick. So he's a 4-4 four, for four, 4. He has Vigilance, Death, Touch, and Haste. He can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. They can't prevent combat damage. And uh, when he deals combat damage to an opponent, he shoots a Planeswalker. They control for that much. So basically, we're just running a pretty rampy green beatdown deck. We got all these mana creatures here. Um, Shadow Spear. Um, I'm going to focus in on the new additions to the deck from Theros. So we have Shadow Spear, which gives Trample and Lifelink. Um, hopefully, we'll get to see how nicely... Trample pairs with Death Touch. Um, in a game, it is... I've played a few games with Questing Beasts post-Theros, and every time I draw Shadow Spear, it is an absolute beating. Um, we have Elysian Karyatid, who uh, replaced one of our other mana dorks. It is more like... It uh, replaced the 0-3 uh, for 2 that taps for uh, 1 green normally and 2 green if we have 4 more creatures. It's more likely we have a creature with power 4 or greater, so that is why we have switched that mana dork out. Going down, uh, we've got the Nessian Horn Beetle. This card gets real scary real fast. It's not hard to get a creature with power 4 or greater in this deck, and this thing just builds and builds and builds into a huge threat. And if we can make our opponent spend removal on our 2-2 two -two for 2, we are in a really good place. I've been playing this in standard. This card is awesome. So going down, we've got a... <laughs> we already were running Return to Nature, but we've got the fancy new Theros art. And then we've got Nylea Keen-Eyed in the deck. She is really awesome. I kind of just threw her in initially to give her a try. I wasn't expecting too much, but she is really very strong, and I've been very happy every time I've drawn her. Um, also playing her in standard, pretty cool. Then we've got Renata called to the Hunt, who is very solid. Um, just getting that extra devotion is not hard, so we could have a really scary threat. That's boosting all our other creatures. Feels really good. I think that's everything. Oh, sh flip down the rest of the deck, and uh, we recently slotted in an Ugin the Ineffable. Ineffable. Um, I don't think I was running that in my earlier builds, but uh, after some thinking, I figured Ugin was pretty good. Oh, and the, uh, another exciting addition is Field of Ruin. This, has, this card has turned our Golos matchup completely the other direction. I was always upset to see Golos. Anytime I draw Field of Ruin, I feel like our, our chance to beat Golos probably goes up. 70, 80 percent, 270 or 80 percent. Um, it's just incredible. Um, to celebrate Theros and the new cards, we'll go ahead and throw on the uh, fancy sad Elspeth sleeves and we're gonna get going. So, we're gonna jump into Wednesday Night Brawl, which I always prefer to play, and I do have the Brawler's Guild Hall to allow me to record on other nights. I'm very unhappy about it, but I mean, I guess it wouldn't really be an episode of the show if I didn't complain about it a little bit. I'm sure you've heard enough of me talking about it, and if you haven't heard enough of me talking about it, watch me on MTG Study Hall because I uh, do that all the time. Okay, this is an absolutely keepable hand. We're up against Ashiok. So I've played this deck before. We need to get going pretty fast here, um, but the fact that we can kill their commander with, uh, with Questing Beast is... Uh, is really, really solid and should help us out a lot here. So we're opening up. Um, we don't have any mana creatures. I was hoping to see a mana creature. Um, we have the two lands here. It's, so it's between Surferon and a forest. We have a pretty heavy mana hand. I don't want to take that forest, but we are going to. Um, because getting mana screwed here would be... Would probably be game. If we can't get a uh, Questing Beast out on time, it's going to be a bad time. And so we also get a kind of judge to see if I made, to uh, see how much my choice pays off. So we haven't drawn a land. So if we had taken the 2 2, 
we would be in a situation where we would need to top deck two lands in a row to get Questing Beast down. So now we just have to top deck one. Oh boy. Okay. So we would have been in trouble right here. Um, we still do need, well, this is pretty easy here. We just crash in with the Horn Beetle. And now, unless they kill our Incubation Druid, we are guaranteed to get Questing Beast down, which will grow our Nessian Horn Beetle, which, as I mentioned earlier, is super awesome. So, ooh, okay. That indicates to me that our opponent likely has a counterspell. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to throw down the Cavalier of Thorns. Oh, it's stuck. Holy crap. Okay. That's fine. Not complaining. Um, I don't know why. Maybe they have a removal spell they're holding up. Uh, they're thinking about something. Um, so we're going to ramp Forest out here. And then... Uh, we played this pre-combat main phase because our horn beetle is going to get bigger, and then we crash it with the horn beetle. Well, okay, they maybe these don't have anything good to play. We were playing that cautious, but maybe we didn't need to. Um, okay, we lose that, and okay. So the question is, do we want a Nissa here? It's also possible they had like a negate. So seeing as they weren't able to counter a creature last time. Um, let me see here. Yeah, okay. Oh, yep, up, 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 up. Meant to hit Yorvo here. And we will also get to do, we'll go Yorvo into Questing Beast. That'll get another trigger on, uh, counter on Yorvo. That's really interesting. Maybe they have the counter spell now. Uh, Okay, guess not. Or if they they decide they want didn't want to do it there, so they're either slow rolling us. Okay, price of fame. Oh, that is probably uh, why we didn't get, they didn't have a removal that lined up. That's okay though. We have uh, the horned beetle growing to a four four, and we have Yorvo stuck, which uh, is pretty sweet. And that's interesting. They milled themselves. So, I don't know if they're kind of going for... There's a few cards in Standard with, like, Narc Amoeba and Creeping Chill that you'd want to self-mill yourself for. Or maybe they're doing a, an escape build, but... Oh, darn. Ritual of such a bummer there. That's okay. We'll just stick uh, Nissa, and if Nissa unta if we untap with Nissa next turn, that will quite likely be game. But, yeah, I'm really curious... That they aren't really milling us with that. That they mill, mill us with that trigger. Oh, darn it. So definitely running a pre-removal heavy deck, which is frustrating, but... We are keeping the pressure. Oh my gosh, okay. They did have the counterspell, but they had a legendary only cre uh, counterspell. So we actually uh, unintentionally played around that when we dropped the... Uh, He's in exile. And we dropped the Cavalier of Thorns. So they've, yeah, they've they've gotten us a uh, questing beast getting blocked or taken out and countered twice sucks, but they're also at nine. Ugh. Okay, now they're milling us out, so interesting. So we want to keep the pressure up. I'm not particularly thrilled about uh, sending our land into a death touch creature. But they basically have to block this. Okay. And we got to trample over for a little bit extra damage. Uh, losing the land uh, and our mana dork earlier is not thrilling. Their uh, their removal they have really their removal has lined up very nicely with what we've done, which uh, I think there's really honestly only so far that can go. Um, here we go. That's a good card. I was, uh, bemoaning the fact that we were limited in our haste creatures, and I was complaining, and here we go. Let's get haste on here. And then we will activate Vivian, give trample. We could sh shot with Vivian, but I want to keep her loyalty high. Um... And they'll gain two life, but we'll get a trample over the rest. How you've grown. 
Okay, so we've got our opponent down to three. Oh, excuse me, five with the lifelink. Uh, I suppose it's possible for them to get control of the board, but uh, that doesn't... Uh, that is a very... Oh, they were bouncing Vivian. That's interesting. Um, they must have a kill spell. I suppose it comes back down with haste anyway, but... Uh, let's see if they've got an answer to the uh, lethal threat on the board. Brazen Borrower is not going to block. Ashiok's not going to do anything. They've got four mana open, and they need to answer our 7-6 here. Um... Uh, I don't think there's anything around that is gonna um, that is gonna stop us here for one blue. Maybe they're digging for the creeping chill. Oh, okay, they've got the other land. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna hedge our bet. I don't think they have an answer here, but we are gonna play like they do. Okay, well, so the the henge gets negated. They're tapped out, and we got it. Okay. Not too bad. So, it is not uncommon to have games where Questing Beast never really gets to resolve for an attack, but, uh... That's okay, he's so efficient. If they have to spend all their time answering Questing Beast, we just get to bash in. So, I'm not gonna complain about that. Questing Beast is probably my stronger Brawl deck, um... It's also just fast, so you can generally get more games in, but uh, it's my I'm feeling down and want to get in quick and uh, win fast deck. It's also the deck I have together in paper for 1v1. So we're playing the new A3Os, which is exciting. I haven't gotten to play them yet. So our opponent's going first. I really like our opener here. Um, we have two mana, a mana dork, Yorvo, so, and, uh, and Nylia. And we got the finale if we need anything, which is kind of a nice one. So we're gonna, ooh, almost clicked Mulligan there. We're gonna keep seven here. So Aethrios is, is one of the Theros gods, so it's a 4-7 for 6, but you're going to need 7 devotion to have it a creature. At the beginning of the opponent's end step, they put a coin counter on another creature, and whenever a creature the coin counter dies or is put into exile, they get that creature. So certainly something we don't want happening, but this deck I don't think is going to be particularly fast, and so they are going to have to deal with a very aggressive go from us. So this is where we get to play our Paradise Druid. And odds are it's going to live because we've got Hexproof, which is going to uh, make it very likely that Questing Beast comes down and smashes in right here. No, I, I, I think Aetherius is cool, and I think it might be better as a commander deck. Um, or even as a Brawl commander, I think it'd be fine for multiplayer, but 1v1, it just seems kind of slow. So, here we go. Bringing in the Questing Beast, see if they have any removal. Doesn't look like it, and we bash in. So the race is on. And see, this is exactly... I just... This deck is spending its time... So the question is, do we bash in... Part of me wants to uh, play the Brontodon and blow up their locket. Um, no, I think we're actually going to do that. Uh, blowing up lands and mana artifacts is really good, and seeing as we're ahead of things and they needed to do that, let's keep them off their turn five. And we get a swing in for six here. And really get to just keep that pressure up. Oh, and see, there we go. And that's game. And so just a little something like that. Um, if our if you see your opponent go all in on a mana artifact, they could be really relying on that. And so land destruction or mana destruction, I suppose. Oh, cool. Got an Omnith. Um, is good. And so that just a simple play like that. Our turn three play, or excuse me, turn four play sealed the game for us. So, uh, that was fast, so uh, you guys are lucky. We're gonna sneak in one more, uh, one more game for this, for this video. Normally I really just have time for two, but Quest and Beast is fast. And if you're trying to grind out quests or get your wins done, um, an aggressive deck is nice. There's mo the Mono Red decks, but I really feel like Questing Beast has a nice matchup. Uh, this is a great opener hand. No ramp, but we have Pelt Collector and Shadow Spear. Totally good with this opener. And we're playing against Niv Mizzet, the but the red and blue one. The one that does not infuriate me and does not need to get banned in this format. Um, Niv Mizzet's a strong commander, but it's not a ridiculous garbage value one like the uh, like the five color one. So unfortunately we didn't get a two drop. Pelt Collector's kind of sad and depressed. We'll put the Shadow Spear down. 
And, oh boy, I'm really hoping we get some action here. I was hoping for a mana creature. Okay, that's not too bad. So we're going to just play the Harpooner out. Um, it's kind of testing the way for a counterspell as well. And uh, there we go. We get a Bastion with a 2-2. We have 5 power on board, 6 if we equip the Shadow Spear. And even if we don't draw the, the fourth land, we still have stuff to do. So Narset is a high priority to kill. Hopefully, we just uh, get the fourth land, Questing Beast comes down, and uh, we can slam in. Oh, and that, oh gosh. Ask and you shall receive. All right, we're going to tr trigger the Pelt Collector, and we don't even need to uh, send anyone in our set, because Questing Beast is going to take care of that for us. And here we see our opponent is at 12. They have the Beacon Bolt, which isn't going to do anything to us until they get more instants and sorceries, so they're going to need to do something pretty drastic here to stop us from winning. If they take out our Questing Beast, the Pelt Collector, grow and the and the Izzet Locket. Now, they could have something for two mana here, but... uh. I'd say we just, uh, we could have equipped the Shadow Spear, but, uh, yep, boom, there we go. Okay. This is why I like Questing Beast. That's, uh, I, normally, this is probably some of the best showing we've had on Brawlin with Brett, so, uh, not unhappy about that. So, this is day one of Questing Beast. Let's, uh, I think we're undefeated right now. Let's see if we can keep our streak up all week. I don't know if that's, that's achievable, but, uh, guess we'll see. So, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Um... Check, us other, uh, check out our other videos here at TCG University. And if you want to see more of me, I'm on MTG Study Hall. And we really appreciate con contributions to the Patreon. It's a big one. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a good one.